The first thing to know about scripting is don't ever call it programming in front of your developer friends or they might have a mild meltdown. No matter what part of IT you get into, whether that's security or networking or system administration, learning scripting can be a valuable skill for you. In this video, I'm gonna break down scripting at a very fundamental level and show you how this works with automation. And that all starts by going to Ninite.com. This video is not sponsored by them, but it's a tool that I have used for what seems like ever now. I can't even tell you how many years I've used it, but it's been an invaluable resource to me and other IT professionals out there as well. This is literally the first website that I go to anytime I build a new computer or I have to reformat my hard drive. It's always going to nightnight.com so that I can download everything that I need very, very easily and simply. So we'll go over and show you this real quick so you guys kind of understand. And then we're gonna go ahead and download one of these programs and show you how we can actually automate the installation process. With Ninite, it's doing everything for you. So we can click on all of these different programs that we wanna download. So for the sake of this video, we're just gonna download Google Chrome and we're gonna download 7-Zip. And then all we have to do is click on Get Your Ninite and then it should prompt us to download or save. So we'll just do Save As and we're gonna go ahead and save this right on my desktop and we'll let that download. So now that this is downloaded, I'll go to my desktop and I'm just gonna run this program. So this actually goes through the process of downloading and installing Google Chrome and 7-Zip on your computer. You literally don't have to touch anything after this point, which is really awesome. What we're witnessing right now is automation. This is doing everything for us. It's utilizing scripting to handle the download and installation of these files. In this video, we're gonna download the file, but we're gonna build a script that will actually install it for us just through basically one or two clicks. And we'll show you what we mean when we get to that point. So as you can see on the screen here, it's finished downloading. And you can see here on our desktop, we have Google Chrome installed. And if we go here to our programs and we just type in seven, we can see that we have seven zip file manager installed. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go to my programs and features. As you can see here, this is a brand new VM. There's literally nothing installed on it except for seven zip, Google Chrome and Microsoft OneDrive for whatever reason. Thanks, Microsoft. Anyway, what we're gonna do now is just go ahead and uninstall 7-Zip because what I wanna do is show you how we can actually automate this. So now that I have Google Chrome installed, I can open that up instead of Edge and it makes me feel much better about my life. And what we're gonna do now is go to the 7-Zip website so we can download the file. So what we're gonna do is type in 7-zip.org and this is the 7-Zip website as you can see here. And what we wanna do is actually go ahead and download the MSI file. So we're gonna go ahead and click on download and then we're gonna look for the 64-bit architecture MSI download here. So if you're on 64-bit Windows, that is the version you would select. If you're on 32-bit Windows, for whatever reason still, you would download the 32-bit uh, version MSI install here. As you can see here, there's two extensions. You may be very familiar with the .exe extension, that's executable extensions, but .msi is a alternate MSI installer, which is a Microsoft installer. This is something that is definitely heavily used in enterprise environments for things like Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, SCCM, things like that, that really kind of help automate the process of installing applications for you and just managing things. So that's just something to keep in mind here. So now that our file is downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and open it in its folder. And the first thing that I'm actually gonna do here is rename it to make things easier for us. So I'm just gonna call this 7-Zip. And now let's go over to our desktop and we're just gonna copy the 7-Zip MSI file right over to our desktop, again, just to make things easy for us. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is we're gonna create a new text file. So we'll just go ahead and go to text document here and we'll open this bad boy up. Now we're gonna get into the scripting part of it. Now, the things that we're gonna put in this text document can actually be run through the command line directly. So what we need to do first is go down to our start menu or our search bar here and type in CMD. And what I wanna do is right click on command prompt and run it as administrator because what we're gonna be doing is installing a program and we wanna have administrator rights in the command line to be able to do that or administrator privileges in order to do that. So with the command line, we can actually tell the computer what to do by giving it commands, giving it text. This text basically tells the computer what to do in the back end. Now, to kind of familiarize yourself with things, we saw kind of how Ninite did it, right? Where it actually ran through everything kind of on its own. If we were to download 7-Zip and run that program all on its own, we would have to go through the next, the next. We want to select this location for the install, next, next, complete, right? And then 7-Zip would be installed. Well, 
like we saw with Ninite, it does all of that for you. In the command line, that's exactly what we're going to do as well. We're gonna make the command line run everything for us on the back end so we don't have to touch anything. So in the command line, we can start typing MSI EXEC. So MSI EXEC actually starts to build this communication with the computer's back end in order to tell it what to do. Next, we wanna make sure we have a space and then slash I. Slash I means install. The next thing that we wanna do is find the location of our file that we downloaded. Now I know that we put this file on our desktop, so we need to actually know the location of that file. So if we go to File Explorer, and we're gonna go to this PC, we're gonna go to our C drive, and now we wanna go to Users, and I know that I'm on the remote account, so if I click on Remote and Desktop, and click up here in our address bar, I can see that the location that the seven zip file exists is in C users remote desktop. So I wanna make sure that I have that in here. So what we're gonna do in the command line is start with the parentheses here, and we could type in C colon slash users slash, and type in remote and then another slash. And now that we're at the remote folder, we wanna to go to the desktop. So we're gonna go and type in desktop, put in another slash. Now we're on the remote desktop and we know that we have that 7-zip file on our desktop. So now all we need to do is type in 7-zip.msi and then a parentheses. Now the next thing we need to do after the parentheses is do a space and then we can type in slash QN. Now QN is basically telling, hey, install this quietly. Don't let me see anything on the screen, just do this for me so I don't have to touch anything and I don't have to see anything. So now that we have this all typed out, all we have to do is hit enter and it's gonna run this for us. So just give it a second after you click enter and then it should install everything in the background for you. We can verify this by going down to our text bar here and typing in programs and features. And there we go. And we could see here we have 7-zip installed. As you saw, it did everything for us. All we had to do was type in this command in the command line. So let's put all of this in a text file and create a batch file so that we can automate this. Now, the reason why we're creating a batch file is because, again, in enterprise environments, when you utilize things like Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, you might utilize a batch file to help automate the process of installing applications for you. So anyway, we're gonna close out all of this here and we're just gonna make sure that we copy this from our command prompt. So if you just highlight this and you do control C on your keyboard, it will copy that for you because we wanna make sure that we have that. So we wanna make sure that we create a new text file so you can go to your search bar here. You could type in notepad or you could type in text file. Just go ahead and open that up. And now what we wanna do first is type in at and then echo space off. Then we're gonna go ahead and go down to a new line and we're gonna type in start this time and we're gonna do space wait. So what we're gonna do next is just do control V because that we wanna copy in that information from the command line. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to a new line and then we're gonna go and type in echo space done. Now that we have this completed, we're gonna go ahead and go to file, save as, and we're gonna go to the desktop and what we're gonna do is just put in 7-zip.bat for the file name. We wanna make sure that the file type is under all files, or otherwise you're gonna save this file as 7-zip.bat.txt. So make sure that you have the file type set to all files. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on save. Now from our desktop here, we have this 7-zip file, and it has a different icon, it has the gears on it. Well, this is a batch file. And we could see this by going to File Explorer and then going to desktop and making sure that we have our view details on. And we can see here 7-zip Windows batch file. That's what it is. So it's a 7-zip.bat. And if we were to right click on this and run as administrator, it would run this file and do everything for us without us doing a thing. So since we already had 7-zip installed, we need to go back to uh, programs and features and we need to remove 7-zip so that we can go through this process again. So we can just go ahead and click on uninstall here and it should be a very quick process. Interesting. I wouldn't say that normally happens, but hey, it worked it uninstalled. All right, so now that 7-zip's no longer on our computer, we can go back to our desktop and find that 7-zip batch file and right click on it and do run as administrator. Now the magic happens. Of course, the UAC is going to stop us from making this very easy for us. Thank you, Microsoft, for your security features. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on yes. And there it does, that, that's all it did, right?
Everything just happened right then and there. The program was installed, everything ran just fine, and now we're good to go. As you can see here, 7-Zip is back in our programs, and it was that easy. So in a sense, what we just did was we built a script that automated a process of installing our application for us. So that is scripting and automation. It definitely does get much more difficult than this once you start learning different scripting languages like PowerShell and Python. And of course, once you start getting into automation, things definitely can start to get more difficult from there. But once you start building your foundation with scripting, you can see how these pieces start to get put into place. If you wanna learn a little bit more about PowerShell, I have a video where I walk you through how to install hundreds of users in Active Directory all through creating a script which automates the entire process for you so you don't have to go through and add a user in Active Directory one by one by one. If you wanna learn more PowerShell, I would suggest utilizing a program like IT Pro TV. Use the coupon code ITCQ30, it saves you 30%. They have PowerShell videos over there as well. And of course, YouTube. YouTube is a great free resource to learn all of the things PowerShell. And another great scripting language to learn is Python. I utilize Python to create a scraping script. And all this does is go out to indeed.com and it scrapes Indeed for different job postings. So it goes through and it'll search every single job posting posting for help desk, every single job posting for Cisco CCNA, and so on and so on. That right there from my perspective and what it's doing is automation and scripting at its finest. Just being able to do exactly what I want it to do automatically. Otherwise, I would have to go out in indeed.com and I would have to type in help desk and do a search and make a notation of how many different jobs there were, or type in Cisco CCNA and I would have to notate how many jobs there are. Instead, with this script, it actually does everything for me and and it puts it all into an Excel sheet for me. So it has all of the numbers that correlate to all of the different searches that I did, and all I have to do is click a button to run a Python script. Once you learn scripting, you can find ways to automate so many different things. They're very valuable skills to have on your resume, and they're very valuable skills just to have overall. So if you're looking to learn scripting or automation, I highly suggest it, and I hope this video just helps introduce you to what it is in a sense. It can be very basic and it can get very complex, but it can all start just from running a few simple commands in your Windows command line. And just getting yourself familiar with the command line is something that I suggest everybody do anyway, because you're gonna find as an IT professional, you're often gonna have a command line open up or PowerShell open up because you're going to be pinging things nonstop. I promise you. You'll be pinging something for one reason or another, always. And there are so many different things that you can do in the command line. If you just type in help, you'll get a full list of different things that you can do. There are a ton of great resources out there to help you learn more about the command line. I strongly suggest you get out on Google and YouTube and find the resource that works with you the best. I hope this video helped kind of introduce you to these fundamentals of scripting and automation. It was just supposed to be very basic. It probably went on a lot longer than I wanted it to. But thank you so much for watching. And as always, take it easy.